This video is brought to you by TubeBuddy, a browser extension to help you optimize and grow your channel by providing you with all the right and most effective research tools needed. If you sign up now, you'll get a 30-day free trial of any paid plan of your choosing. All you have to do is sign up through this link. Now, on to the video. Here you go, mommy. Take this, okay? Take care. I gotta go. Take okay? care. You take care, son. Dealing drugs, people getting killed, nightclubs. You take care. Go to school. We go somewhere. It's not too late, my baby. I mean, but you got it all wrong. I mean, it's not like that anymore. You know, I, I know good people, I know bad people, you know, but I know the difference. I mean, I know I made mistakes, but things are better now. I mean, how many times we got to go over this? If things are better now, then why are you always like this? Right, but you take the money, right? You take the fucking money every time. Get out of my house. All what right. choice do I have? I lost my job. Yeah, well, call one of your other kids, the one you ain't ashamed of. Alright ladies, prepare to step on the dance floor with Mr. Lopez. A full-time club manager, bouncer, business partner, and ladies man of the nightlife, and part-time flunky and life insurance of the criminal underworld. Coming from a not-so-ideal setting, his story is shared with most ghetto youths who look toward a better life. But when you're constantly surrounded by such negative influences, that just starts to look more like an unattainable concept, especially when you are the foil to more colorful characters. I mean, after all, if you can keep your head while everyone else is losing theirs and shaming you, you straight homie. So today on Liberty City Origins, we will focus on the past, present, and unforeseen future struggles of Grand Theft Auto 4's most underrated protagonist, Luis Fernando Lopez. Born in 1983 of Dominican descent, Luis grew up on Frankfurt Avenue of Northwood in Algonquin Liberty City. He's the middle child of two siblings. His little sister Letta, whom he is the closest to, works at a human resource department and is married with an unknown amount of children. His older brother Ernesto, on the other hand, cares very little about his blood family and has a bitter relationship with Luis. He even moved out of Liberty City altogether to start his own family, working as an accountant. Luis greatly resembles his father, Mr. Lopez, who served in the U.S. Marine Corps. He abandoned his family when his kids were at an early age and started a new family in the Midwest, which he also abandoned for a waitress. Despite this, Luis keeps pictures of him up on his apartment wall. But he and his siblings were all properly raised by their single mother, Adriana Yanera Lopez, who was also like a loving mother to his two childhood best friends, Armando Torres and Henrique Bardes. There was also Oscar Gomez, his brother Alonzo, Teddy Benavidez, and Willie Valero, other childhood friends of Luis. Because they were all older by three years, they influenced other kids around the neighborhood to start dealing drugs with them. Luis once took up rapping during a drug war, but apparently he wasn't too good at it. His school life wasn't very pleasant either, as spending time in detention was regarded as worse than death. He and his friends would also used to steal liquor from their principal's office. In 2000, he was sent to juvenile hall at age 17 for shooting a teacher who was inappropriate with his sister. This offense was inexplicably left out of his criminal record, however. In 2001, Luis presumably took the fall for Armando and Henrique for committing Grand Theft Auto and was sentenced to two years. But during these two years in prison, Luis, who used to be a scrawny teenager, got swollen in order to weed off all those violent inmates. After lockup, Luis stayed with his mother to support her financially when his two siblings left to start their own families. In 2003, he was arrested yet a third time for assault, but the only reason he managed to avoid prison this time 
It's because the LCPD assumed he was still associated with Gomez and Valero, when in reality, he no longer was. But in 2005 is when things started to look up for Luis when he was first introduced to the legendary Gay Tony Prince, a nightclub entrepreneur who owns Masonette 9 and Hercules. Tony took Luis in as a son and gave him a job as a doorman and bouncer, then eventually promoted him to bodyguard, even paying Luis to take flying lessons and advanced driving lessons for business purposes. And from then on, Luis's life became filled with money, glamour, women, and endless opportunities. So he cut ties with his old gang. But he keeps around his best friends who constantly rag on him for his new life, and even try to pull him back into his old one. His mother, meanwhile, rags on him too, but would prefer to have a college-bound son. But certainly not above taking his club money. In 2008, Tony suffers a major recession and is now in debt with several loan sharks all across Liberty City, including the Ancelotti crime family. He sends Luis to the bank to get some money for him, only for the bank to suddenly get robbed by the McCreary crime family, and Nico Bellic. During the robbery, he gets into a quiet conversation with Eugene Reaper, another hostage then witnesses him being gunned down when trying to gun down the robbers himself. After that, Luis visits Tony's apartment where they are soon intruded on by Rocco Pelosi and his uncle Vince, members of the Ancelotti's. To pay off his debts, Tony begs the reluctant Luis to do jobs for them. Then he goes on to work for Maury Kibbutz, another one of Tony's loan sharks and the older brother of Brucey Kibbutz. And speaking more on his mother, Luis learns that she's also in debt to this loan shark who's quite a charming fellow. So he aids her financial needs, you know, what he's already been doing, by being reintroduced to cage fighting, something he has since abandoned after going legitimate. But for what it's worth, Luis goes on to befriend and work for real estate developer Yusuf Amir, who is interested in buying and franchising Tony's clubs. Eventually, Luis accompanies his boss and his boyfriend Evan Moss to a diamond deal at the Platypus cargo ship, looking to buy $2 million worth of diamonds from the ship's cook in hopes of paying off his debts. Unfortunately, they are then ambushed by the lost MC led by their president, Johnny Clevitz, who ends up stealing the ice and even ices Evan along the way. <laughs> So with the aid of Yusuf's fancy golden buzzard, Luis steals it back by interrupting a deal at the museum between Nico, Johnny, and the Jewish mob. Then there's Ray Bulgarin. He, Luis, and Tony first meet at Masonette 9 where he employs Luis after agreeing to help Tony with his debts. At first, things are business as usual. Until Ray hears about that whole diamond fiasco Tony started, and now he wants both men dead cause, as it turns out, the diamonds are actually his. Also during this time, Gracie Ancelotti, a dear friend of Tony's and the mob princess of Giovanni Ancelotti, gets kidnapped by Nico and Patrick McCreary. So to get Ray off their ass, they first think about giving him his diamonds back, but decide to trade them away to get Gracie back. Ray finds out and ambushes the exchange as the trio flees in a boat. Shortly after, Rocco phones Luis telling him to meet privately at Meadow Parks. Once there, Rocco and his uncle Vince explains that Ray and Giovanni previously had a discussion on recent events and both men conclude that due to all their problems caused by Luis and Tony, one of them must bite the dust for it. So Rocco concludes that it might as well be Tony since they'd rather work with Luis and take over the clubs. But during their following meeting at Mason at 9, when the time comes to finally do the deed, Luis, just for a few seconds, lingers on the idea of ending his father figure before ultimately choosing to kill Uncle Vince instead, but begrudgingly spares Rocco due to his main man status. When Bulgarin's goons raid the club, Luis shoots his and Tony's way out of the ambush and the two go their separate ways with tension rising between them. 
but they're able to put aside their personal beef to face their real adversaries. So Luis drives them to Funland in Hove Beach Broker to rid themselves of Bolgarin forever. But he tells Tony to stay safe and wait for him in Meadow Parks. But only if he survives. Luis becomes a one-man army against the Syndicate by first destroying the heroin stash. And in the process, he learns from Ray's underboss Timmer, right before him, that Ray is trying to leave the city in his private jet. So Luis races to the airport on a motorcycle with the aid of use of protecting him from the goons in his way. He makes it to the airport and just as the jet is about to take off, Luis jumps on and confronts Ray who tries to pull him with a grenade. Luckily, Luis jumps off the exploding jet in time and parachutes down to Meadow Parks, where he bumps into a homeless man who actually ends up finding the missing diamonds in the trash bin. He meets back up with Tony sitting on a bench and they reflect on every crazy thing they've survived as they rekindle their friendship. Yusuf greets them and as the trio prepares to leave the park, they decline Yusuf's second offer to franchise the clubs, although they eventually accept it anyway. After it's all said and done, Tony has presumably left Liberty City as his number is removed from Luis's phone. If Luis tries to call Rocco, it's revealed he's also left the state. If Mori is called, he'll try to make amends with Luis, but still manages to give himself away as a bottomless <laughs> So Luis blocks his number. And lastly, he phones his mother, letting her know that his and Tony's problems have all been resolved. Ten years later, Luis's life after GTA 4 remains unknown. But if the GTA Online player gets into the nightclub business with Tony, who's moved to Los Santos by this point, we see on his office desk a photo of Luis, implying that they're still on good terms to this day. Admittedly, there isn't very much for me to close out on with Luis being the least impactful protagonist of the GTA series. Not treated with much significance, he doesn't get a physical cameo like Johnny, or even a small mention like Nico. He's not even the main character of the Ballad of Gay Tony, just the playable one. Cause, let's be honest, can you really picture this guy carrying us through the whole game? I think not. But I will say Luis is a rare case for a GTA protagonist, the first being Victor Vance. Being morally grounded, progressive, and able to see the bigger picture of things, he serves as nothing more than a physical and emotional crutch for those who are too incompetent to stand on their own. That being said, his loyalty is a gift and a curse. Because without the people dragging him down, Luis Lopez would be 100% straight. Figuratively, not just literally.